Beowulf, an old English epic poem, consists of 3,182 alliterative lines and is a significant work of old English literature, often translated and studied. The date of its composition is debated, but the manuscript dates between 975 and 1025 AD. The author is unknown and referred to as the Beowulf poet. The story is set in pagan Scandinavia during the 6th century. Beowulf, a hero of the Geats, aids Hrothgar, the king of the Danes, whose mead hall Herat has been under attack by the monster Grendel for 12 years. After Beowulf defeats Grendel, the monster's mother seeks revenge but is also defeated. Beowulf returns home to Geatland, where he becomes king. Fifty years later, Beowulf faces a dragon and, though victorious, is fatally wounded. His body is cremated, and a barrow is erected in his memory on a headland. Beowulf is an Old English epic poem written in the West Saxon dialect. Its exact date of composition, believed to be between the 8th and 11th centuries, is a topic of debate among scholars. The manuscript, known as Cotton Vitellius AXV, dates from around 975 to 1025 AD but was damaged by fire in 1731. The author is unknown. The poem, consisting of approximately 3,182 lines, is considered one of the most important works of Old English literature and is often studied and translated. It belongs to the genre of epic heroic writing and is written in alliterative verse. The story revolves around the battles of Beowulf, a hero of the Geats, in his youth and old age. The poem features several notable characters, including Beowulf, Hygelic, Rothgar, Wealthyau, Rothulf, Escher, Unferth, Grendel, Grendel's mother, Wiglaf, and Hildbur. Beowulf's transmission and interpretation have sparked scholarly debate, particularly regarding its oral transmission and the interplay of pagan and Christian elements. Scholars discuss whether the poem was originally composed orally in pagan times, with Christian elements added later, or if it was composed in writing by a Christian, with pagan elements included as decorative archaisms. Some scholars also suggest an intermediate position. The poem's language, primarily late West Saxon, shows other dialectal forms, indicating a complex transmission across England's dialect areas. Scholars have compared Beowulf to various traditions, including the Icelandic Greta Saga, Norse tales like that of Hrólf Kraki and Bodvar Bjarki, the international folktale The Bear's Sun Tale, and the Irish folktale of The Hand and the Child. Some have attempted to link Beowulf to classical works like Homer's Odyssey or Virgil's Aeneid. Clear biblical parallels exist, with allusions to books like Genesis, Exodus, and Daniel. The poem exists in a single manuscript, the Noel Codex, housed in the British Library. The manuscript suffered fire damage in 1731, affecting its margins and some readings. Beowulf was first transcribed in 1786, with partial translations into modern English in 1805 and nine complete translations in the 19th century, including those by John Mitchell Kemble and William Morris. In the 20th century, many more translations were made, ranging from faithful to archaic to domesticating. Notable translations include those by Edwin Morgan, Burton Raffle, Michael J. Alexander, Roy Liuza, and Seamus Heaney. The challenge of translating Beowulf has been explored by scholars like J. R. R. Tolkien, who worked on his own verse and prose translations. Germanic heroic legend, or, Germanisch Heldensage, in German, constitutes the heroic literary tradition of the Germanic-speaking peoples, with most stories originating or being set in the migration period 4th-6th centuries AD. These tales were primarily transmitted orally, circulating widely among Germanic-speaking communities and existing in numerous variants. The legends often reinterpreted historical events or figures in the form of oral poetry, creating a heroic era characterized by a code of honor, glory, and loyalty. Similar to Germanic mythology, heroic legend represents a genre within Germanic folklore. Beowulf, the hero of the Geats, comes to the aid of Hrothgar, the king of the Danes, whose hall, Herat, is plagued by the monster Grendel. Beowulf defeats Grendel and later kills Grendel's mother. He becomes king of the Geats and faces a dragon, resulting in his own death. Beowulf is considered an epic poem because it features a hero who undertakes great journeys and battles against supernatural foes. The poem begins in Medias Res, or in the middle of things, and explores themes of loyalty, valor, and honor among warriors. It is tightly structured, with the killing of Grendel mirroring the killing of the dragon, and the glory of the Danes matching that of the Gietish courts. After celebrating the defeat of Grendel, Hrothgar and his men sleep in Herat. Grendel's mother, seeking revenge for her son's death, 
attacks the hall and kills Escher, Hrothgar's most loyal fighter. She then escapes to her lair. Beowulf, who was lodged elsewhere, is not present for the attack. When he learns of the situation, he vows to defeat Grendel's mother and sets out with Hrothgar and his men to track her down. They find her lair under a lake, and Beowulf, after receiving the sword running from Unfer, jumps into the lake and reaches the cavern at the bottom. In the ensuing battle, Grendel's mother initially has the upper hand and Runding proves ineffective against her. She throws Beowulf to the ground and attempts to kill him, but his armor saves him. Beowulf then spots a giant sword hanging on the wall and uses it to decapitate Grendel's mother. Exploring further, Beowulf finds Grendel's corpse and decapitates it as well. The blade of the sword melts from the monster's hot blood, leaving only the hilt. Beowulf returns to the surface with Grendel's head and the hilt of the giant's sword, which he presents to Hrothgar. In return, Hrothgar gives Beowulf many gifts, including the sword Nagling. The events lead to a reflective sermon by Hrothgar, advising Beowulf to be cautious of pride and to reward his followers. After returning home and ruling as king for fifty years, Beowulf faces his final battle. A slave steals a golden cup from a dragon's lair, awakening the dragon. Enraged, the dragon emerges from its cave, burning everything in its path. Beowulf, now an old man, decides to confront the dragon alone, telling his warriors to wait on the barrow. As Beowulf battles the dragon, his men watch in fear and eventually retreat into the woods, except for Wiglaf, who is distressed by Beowulf's struggle and comes to his aid. Together, they slay the dragon, but Beowulf is mortally wounded in the process. Wiglaf remains by Beowulf's side as he dies. When the other men return, Wiglaf chastises them for their cowardice, blaming them for Beowulf's death. Beowulf is cremated on a great pyre in Geatland, and a barrow is built in his memory. The Geats mourn his death, fearing that without him, they are vulnerable to attacks from neighboring tribes. The poem Beowulf contains several apparent digressions from the main story, which early scholars found troublesome, stating that they interrupt the story and clog the action and distract attention from it. However, more recent scholars argue that these digressions can be explained as introductions or comparisons with elements of the main story. For example, Beowulf swimming home across the sea from Frisia with 30 sets of armor emphasizes his heroic strength. The digressions can be grouped into four categories. The styled narrative at the start, descriptions of the Geats, including their wars, tales of history and legend, such as the fight at Finsburg and the tale of Freewuru and Ingeld, and biblical tales, like the creation myth and the lineage of monsters from Cain. These digressions add to the poem's historical depth, a feature also seen in Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings, which draws inspiration from Beowulf. The summary provided outlines the initial events of the epic poem Beowulf. It begins with King Hrothgar of Denmark, who constructs a grand mead hall named Herat where his warriors can gather and celebrate. However, the noise from the hall angers Grendel, a monstrous demon who attacks the hall and its inhabitants, terrorizing the Danes for many years. Beowulf, a young warrior from Geatland, hears of Hrothgar's troubles and travels to Denmark with a group of men to help. Hrothgar, grateful for Beowulf's offer, holds a feast in his honor. During the feast, Beowulf is taunted by Unferth, but Beowulf responds confidently, boasting of his past achievements. When Grendel attacks the hall that night, Beowulf confronts him unarmed and defeats him in a fierce battle, tearing off his arm. Mortally wounded, Grendel retreats to his swamp to die, and his severed arm is hung in Herat as a trophy. This sets the stage for the subsequent battles and events in the poem, including Beowulf's later encounters with Grendel's mother and the dragon. After Grendel's defeat, Hrothgar honors Beowulf with a lavish feast, showering him with gifts and praise. However, their joy is short-lived as Grendel's mother, seeking revenge, attacks Herod and kills Escher before escaping. To avenge Escher's death, Beowulf and his men journey to the swamp where Grendel's mother lives. Beowulf dives into the lake and battles her in her underwater lair, eventually killing her with a giant sword. Beowulf also finds Grendel's corpse and decapitates it, bringing the head as a trophy to Rothgar. With both monsters now defeated, the Danish countryside is rid of their menace. The Danes celebrate Beowulf's victory, and his fame spreads throughout the kingdom. Beowulf bids a sorrowful farewell to Hrothgar, who has treated him like a son, and returns to Geatland. There, he reunites with King Hygelic and Queen Hygd, recounting his adventures in Denmark. Beowulf presents most of his treasure to Hygelic, who rewards him in return. 
The analysis of Beowulf highlights the central conflict of the poem, which arises from the clash between Beowulf, representing the ancient Northern European warrior code, and the limitations of that code. The conflict is depicted through Beowulf's series of combats, beginning with Grendel, a creature nursing a grievance against the warrior King Hrothgar and his men. Grendel is portrayed as possibly representing the displaced and exiled people who suffered from Hrothgar's conquests, which were celebrated under the warrior code. While Beowulf defeats Grendel, the poem's shift to Grendel's perspective suggests that Beowulf's heroism only leads to further suffering. The second combat is with Grendel's mother, who embodies another limitation of the warrior code. Hildbert's story within the poem illustrates this limitation, showing how women are left powerless and grieving by the blood vengeance required by the code. Grendel's mother, portrayed as a female avenger, represents these powerless women. Beowulf's actions, including his desire for vengeance against Grendel's mother, highlight the unending cycle of bloodshed inherent in the heroic code. Overall, the analysis emphasizes how Beowulf's encounters with Grendel and his mother reveal the complexities and limitations of the warrior code, suggesting a critique of the violence and vengeance inherent in such codes of honor. The analysis of Beowulf's final battle with the dragon highlights two major limitations of the heroic code. Firstly, Beowulf is caught between conflicting rules, the requirement to show unyielding courage and seek fame as a warrior, and the duty of a king to stay alive to protect his people. This conflict suggests that even the most heroic individuals must make choices that can have negative consequences for others, as seen in Wiglaf's comment after Beowulf's death. Secondly, Beowulf's ultimate defeat by the dragon demonstrates that even the greatest warriors are eventually faced with foes they cannot overcome, whether it be old age or a formidable opponent. While Beowulf's death is portrayed as a heroic one, where he slays the dragon and secures treasure for his people, it is also seen as a disaster. At Beowulf's funeral, there is a sense of impending doom, with the people foreseeing, enemies on the rampage, bodies in piles, slavery in a basement. This suggests that, despite the admirable aspects of the warrior code, it ultimately leads to tragic outcomes. Hrothgar, king of the Danes, builds the magnificent Mead Hall Herat as a symbol of his prosperity. However, the hall becomes a place of terror as the monster Grendel, descended from Cain, begins raiding it every night, killing and devouring the warriors. This continues for twelve years until Beowulf, a Gidish warrior, arrives to help. Beowulf, known for his powerful grip, fights Grendel unarmed and tears off the monster's arm, forcing him to flee to his death. Hrothgar rewards Beowulf with a feast and treasure, but their celebration is interrupted when Grendel's mother seeks revenge. She kills Escher, a trusted advisor, and escapes back to her underwater lair. Beowulf vows to kill Grendel's mother and dives into the lake, where he battles her in her cave. His sword fails, but he finds a giant's sword and beheads her. He also finds Grendel's body and takes his head and the giant's sword hilt as trophies. Returning to Herat, Beowulf is celebrated again, and Hrothgar treats him like a son. Beowulf and his men return to Geatland, where Beowulf becomes king after Hygelic's death. He rules wisely for fifty years, but in his old age, a thief steals from a dragon's hoard, awakening the dragon. Beowulf decides to fight the dragon despite knowing his death is near. In the battle, Beowulf's men flee except for Wiglaf, who helps him slay the dragon. Beowulf is mortally wounded. Before dying, he names Wiglaf as his successor and asks for a funeral pyre overlooking the sea. Wiglaf chastises the men for abandoning Beowulf. The Geats cremate Beowulf and bury the dragon's treasure with him in a barrow. Beowulf is an old English epic poem composed by an unknown author around the year 1000 CE. It is possibly the oldest surviving long poem in Old English, although some parts of it have been lost, most likely due to fire damage. The story is set in Scandinavia and centers around Beowulf, a hero of the Geats, who comes to the aid of Hrothgar, the king of the Danes. Hrothgar's great hall, Herat, has been plagued by the monster Grendel, who attacks and kills Hrothgar's warriors every night. Beowulf arrives with his warriors and offers to defeat Grendel for Hrothgar. Beowulf waits for Grendel to return and fights him barehanded, ultimately tearing off Grendel's arm, causing him to flee and later die. Hrothgar praises Beowulf's bravery and promises him a reward. However, the threat is not over, as Grendel's mother seeks revenge for her son's death. She attacks Herat, killing one of Hrothgar's men, and Beowulf volunteers to fight her. Beowulf ventures into a fiery lake where Grendel's mother lives and engages in a fierce battle with her. 
With the help of a magic sword, Beowulf beheads her and finds Grendel's body, which he also decapitates. Hrothgar rewards Beowulf with treasure and advice. Beowulf returns home to Geatland and presents the treasure to his king, Higlak. Years later, after Higlak and his sons have died, Beowulf becomes the king of Geatland. In his old age, a dragon awakens and begins terrorizing his kingdom after a thief steals a golden cup from its hoard. Beowulf decides to confront the dragon despite his age, but during the battle, he is mortally wounded by the dragon's poisonous bite. Beowulf manages to kill the dragon with Wiglaf's help, but he succumbs to his injuries. Before he dies, Beowulf names Wiglaf his successor and asks him to retrieve some of the dragon's treasure. Wiglaf obeys, and Beowulf is buried with the treasure in a tower overlooking the sea, which is named after him to honor his legacy, bravery, and greatness. Beowulf, as an epic poem, has inspired numerous adaptations in various forms of media, including novels, short stories, and films. Many works in literature and popular culture also incorporate elements from Beowulf. Because the original poem was written in Old English, translations into Modern English can vary, leading to different interpretations of certain lines or scenes. One of the most intriguing aspects of Beowulf is the coexistence of Christian beliefs and pagan traditions throughout the story. While Beowulf himself believes in one God and upholds virtues from the Christian faith, his actions and the world he inhabits are steeped in pagan customs and interpretations of those Christian beliefs. For example, the concept of the ring giver highlights this blend of traditions. Characters like Hrothgar are expected to reward those who act on their behalf, a pagan tradition, while also being revered and honored as rulers, reflecting Christian ideals of leadership and virtue. This complex interplay between two belief systems adds depth and richness to the narrative, making Beowulf a compelling and enduring tale. Beowulf is a poem deeply concerned with the concept of identity, focusing on two main aspects, ancestral heritage and individual reputation. In the world of Beowulf, a person's identity is intricately tied to their lineage, with characters often introducing themselves or others by referencing their family history. This emphasis on heritage stems from the poem's strong emphasis on kinship bonds, where individuals take pride in the heroic deeds of their ancestors and strive to emulate them. Ancestral heritage serves as a model for behavior and helps shape an individual's identity, as seen in the reverence for past kings and heroes. For example, Shield Sheafson, the legendary founder of the Danish royal line, was orphaned and had to establish his identity through his courageous deeds. This underscores the importance of heroic actions in defining one's identity in the poem's society. In addition to heritage, reputation plays a crucial role in solidifying and enhancing one's identity in Beowulf's world. A good reputation is seen as essential for ensuring that an individual's memory lives on after their death, as fame is viewed as a form of immortality. This focus on reputation reflects the poem's pagan warrior culture, which values valor and renown as ways to ensure a lasting legacy. Overall, Beowulf explores the theme of identity through the lens of ancestral heritage and individual reputation, highlighting the importance of these elements in shaping the character's sense of self and their place in society. The epic poem Beowulf delves deeply into the Germanic heroic code, emphasizing values such as strength, courage, loyalty, and reputation. This code is central to the character's moral judgments and societal structures, providing a framework for understanding their roles and relationships. However, the poem also explores the tensions within this code, revealing its contradictions and conflicts with other value systems. One such tension arises in situations of divided loyalties, where the code offers no clear guidance. For example, the story of Hildbert illustrates the challenges faced when familial and political allegiances clash, leading to profound grief and loss. Furthermore, Beowulf depicts the clash between the heroic code and Christian values. While the code values honor gained through earthly deeds, Christianity emphasizes spiritual glory in the afterlife. This conflict is evident in the poem's portrayal of the tension between the warrior culture's emphasis on retaliation and Christianity's call for forgiveness and peace. The poet navigates these conflicting values, showcasing the complexity of human experience and the challenges of reconciling different belief systems. The tension between the heroic code and other value systems adds depth to the characters and themes of Beowulf, highlighting the complexities of morality and honor in a changing world. Themes in Beowulf the importance of establishing identity, ancestral heritage and individual reputation are central to Beowulf, where characters are defined by their lineage and deeds. 
Family history and kinship bonds are emphasized, with characters striving to live up to the standards set by their ancestors. Reputation is key to securing one's identity, as fame ensures remembrance after death in a world fraught with mortality. Tensions between the heroic code and other value systems. The Germanic heroic code, emphasizing strength, courage, loyalty, and reputation, forms the basis of moral judgments in Beowulf. However, the poem also explores conflicts within this code, such as situations of divided loyalties, and its clash with Christian values. The code's mandate for vengeance conflicts with Christian ideals of forgiveness and peacefulness, highlighting the complexities of moral decision-making. The difference between a good warrior and a good king. Beowulf's evolution from valiant warrior to wise leader demonstrates the differing values associated with each role. While a warrior seeks personal glory, a king prioritizes the protection and well-being of his people. The responsibilities of a king include rewarding loyalty, providing protection, and maintaining stability through diplomacy. Beowulf's own kingship exemplifies this transition, showcasing the tension between the duties of a heroic warrior and those of a heroic king. These themes collectively contribute to the richness and depth of Beowulf. Exploring complex ideas of identity, morality, and leadership in a world shaped by pagan traditions and Christian beliefs. Evil in Beowulf In Beowulf, evil is depicted as a mysterious and inhuman force, embodied by the monsters that terrorize the poem's human characters. Grendel, the most prominent of these monsters, is often seen as closely linked to evil. Described as a fiend out of hell, and a descendant of Cain, he embodies the darkness and malevolence associated with evil. However, the poem also suggests that evil is not purely malevolent. Grendel's mother, for instance, seeks vengeance for her son's death, a motive that is understandable from a human perspective. Even Grendel himself is portrayed with some sympathy, as he nurses a grievance and acts out of isolation, envy, and fear rather than sheer malice. By humanizing these monsters and providing insight into their motives, the poem blurs the line between human and inhuman, suggesting that evil is not always an external force but can also be a part of human nature. This nuanced portrayal of evil challenges the reader to reconsider their understanding of morality and human nature. It suggests that evil is not simply a supernatural threat but also a complex and multifaceted aspect of the human experience, present even in acts that may seem ordinary or justified in the context of war and conflict. Themes in Beowulf The importance of establishing identity, ancestral heritage and individual reputation are central to Beowulf. Characters take pride in their ancestors' valor and strive to live up to those standards. Good reputation solidifies one's identity, and fame ensures memory after death. Tensions between the heroic code and other value systems. The Germanic heroic code, valuing strength, courage, and loyalty, often conflicts with Christian values such as forgiveness and peacefulness. The poem portrays situations where the code offers no guidance, highlighting these contradictions. The difference between a good warrior and a good king. Beowulf evolves from a valiant warrior to a wise king, embodying different sets of values. The poem contrasts Beowulf's desire for personal glory with Hrothgar's focus on protecting his people, illustrating the responsibilities of kingship. Evil. Beowulf's monsters are seen as embodiments of evil, emerging from darkness to inflict fear and suffering. Despite their evil deeds, the monsters are humanized, suggesting that evil is both mysterious and a part of human life. Treasure. Glory in Beowulf is often measured in treasure. The amount of treasure given or received reflects one's glory and generosity. However, the poem also questions the value of treasure, as seen in the dragon's hoard. Mortality. Beowulf confronts death throughout the poem, beginning and ending with funerals. Beowulf's journey and ultimate death highlight the tragic nature of pagan mortality, yet also portray the heroic bravery of living a good life despite inevitable death.